hey guys welcome to my channel once again uh, my name is omo balaji and in this series i will be taking you through the different skills stations in the midwifery oscar I've highlighted in my previous video that altogether there are 16 stations. Um, so in today's video, I will just do a rundown of postpartum hemorrhage and we'll be using the uh, marking criteria together. We'll go through the marking criteria together. We'll go through the marking criteria. To, if you are preparing for your OSCE already, I reckon you have this already. So um, after we go through the marking criteria together, at the end of the video, um, you would see me in my raw states when I was preparing for my exam. So watching me do it might also be beneficial for you um, to know what and what not to do when you are preparing for yours. So the assessment criteria, these are the things that they want to see. You recognize the emergency and call for help. Recognize the need to use the emergency buzzer. You ensure baby is in a place of safety, such as the courts. What this is going to be like is your assessor tells you, okay, so this is so so and so. She had her baby six hours ago and then she's now bleeding. What will you do? So at that point, you would verbalize that you pull the emergency buzzer and then you call for help. You call for the help of the S. There are six um s depending on the situation it's actually similar to some other um, skills you find further down you're calling for the help of the soaps you're calling for the help of the soaps so the soaps is the senior midwife the obstetrician the anesthetist the in this case we are burning baby no baby has been born so you don't need the pediatrician so the p is going to be potter the S is going to be scribes and all other midwives. Because it's postpartum hemorrhage, you have an H at the, at the back. The H is going to be for the clinical hematologist. And then you can have other midwives. Other midwives. So for all the situations, the emergency situation, this soaps is important. So you call for help. You call all these people to come. And then you pull the emergency buzzer. Then, and in sometimes, the other thing here is ensures that baby is in a safe place, such as the court. So for this one, ensures that baby is in a safe place such as the court. You could have a scenario where they'll put your baby there. Like, and then you just jump to the scene. You won't even realize that the mother was breastfeeding just before they noticed she was having PPH. So it is important that you would take the baby to a place of safety such as the court. So in that situation, after you've pulled, you go back to the mama, mom, you assess the scene. And then you see the baby, mother holding the baby. You take the baby off and say, okay, mommy, I'm going to put the baby in a safe place, in a firm and flat surface that is warm. Then you place the baby carefully in the cot before you begin to do. If it happens that you forget to probably move the baby, as soon as you remember, take the baby out because it could be like... um it could be a safety issue and um for the oski most one major thing they're assessing for is your safety like how are you able to keep the mother safe how are you able to keep the baby safe and even how you discard your items how are you able to keep the public safe it's not just even limited to the two of them so you verbally consider the cost of the hemorrhage could be torn tissue trauma or thrombin so in that one you would just probably say okay so amy the cause of the bleeding is this this and this so at the end of the video you would see how i put all of these things together how the formats with which we, we i did it at the end of the video so you verbally consider the cause of the hemorrhage tone trauma cause of a thrombin so it's going to be like amy you're bleeding profusely and this could be due to tone it could be due to trauma it could be due to thrombin and it could be due to tissue perhaps you have retained tissue um retained products of um of conception tone perhaps your uterus is not contracting well thrombin perhaps you know you don't have the adequate clotting factors that you need so those are things that you would highlight for um while you are still doing your checks then you support the woman to lie on her back you commence high flow oxygen rub up you try and contraction this must be demonstrated so the rubbing up you make your hand into a fist yeah midwife you know these things already this one is just more like 
guiding us into how to prepare for OSCE. So you rub up the uterus. We know these things. You check the placenta. You verbalize checking the placenta for completeness. You ask the assessor, assessor, is this placenta complete? Assessor will tell you. Then you verbalize the need to check for trauma. For all these things, you're actually... You ju they just want to assess whether you know what to do when the situation arises because it's going to be a mannequin so yeah you won't even be able to like assess as you should assess if it was a real life patient so you verbalize the need to check for trauma you identify that you would cite two large ball cannulas one on each arm and then you state what why you're citing two large ball cannulas so basically it's because one on each arm one is to obtain sample you tell them you're taking sample for um grouping and cross matching up to first six units of blood you're taking sample for liver function test for um full blood counts for liver function tests for what's the other one now i can't remember this thing very well again no oh god i beg <laughs> you see it at the end of my video when i was practicing for mine and then you tell them you commence fluids on the other arm um, which could be um, crystalloid solution, e.g. Hartman solution or normal saline. Um, it's on here. Yeah, verbalizes the need to commence fluid resuscitation using crystalloid infusion. Then you go on to say you catheterize the woman um, <clears throat> with indwelling foolish catheter. You tell them why. You tell them you do the hops, potential indicator, indicators of shock adequate you would verbalize the medications you consider to stop the bleeding tell them um, you ask the assessor assessor has this woman had a oxytocin she says yes or no and then you go on to tell them what you do after so since she's had the first dose of her oxytocin i'll go on to administer the second dose and then she'll commence oxytocin infusion and then she'll have uh, my suprastol or carboprost and then she'll have tranexamic acid um and then she could have um blood or blood products okay i still remember small <laughs> oh god it felt like when i was ready for my exam it felt like it still would not leave my head again <laughs> but now it's it's it is where it is where anyway <clears throat> so you verbalize those things if you are unsure of the dosage don't bother mentioning it because if you mention a wrong dosage then it might lead to fail so just tell them as prescribed you double check as prescribed so you perform by manual compression of the uterus which could be your you 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 tell them how you do it so basically you tell them you before you go on you take consent from the mother so basically you tell the assessor you go in with your fingers crunched this way and then you go in you make a fist at the placenta side you use your other ham you use your other ham to support the fundus and you apply pressure to stop the bleeding so at that point they would assessor would they would normally tell you, you keep asking asking your assessor at each point assessor is this patient still bleeding so they could say the patient is still bleeding or the patient has stopped bleeding if the patient has stopped bleeding at that point then you go on to say all the things you do after if they say the patient is still bleeding at that point you won't take your hands off until the patient gets will to theater you tell them at this point you have to maintain that by manual compression until patient gets will to the theater and then you tell them what they could possibly do at the theater. Um, they, they could do its PPH, right? It could be stereoscopy, it could be balloon tamponade, um, it could be what else do they do at the theater? Uh, it could be B B Lynch suture technique. I think I remember that part, yeah. So you mentioned the things that you do, and then after all, you go on to tell us. You go on to tell us what you do after the baby comes back you complete um incident form so there are there are five d's that you must do you document so the document is a um, complete incident form you um, do the observations again complete news chat you monitor look here you do your duty of candor you debrief um <coughs> you debrief the you debrief the husband the sup you support she might not know everything that has happened so it is now your position to tell her that this and this and this and this happened and then we did this and this and this and this and this completing a postpartum hemorrhage performer then you do the hubs you debrief you do duty of candor um what else do you do you do duty of candor you do the you monitor look here 
you estimate blood loss then provide midwifery care and reassurance so if you mention this few it's um actually a lot you you might not even have such time to be honest consider other options that might be taken if medical team is if bleeding is not settled you mentioned that bit too verbalizes the need to ensure that the woman understands what has happened and has the chance to bond with her baby i've said that already where you debrief the woman and then you encourage initiate skin to skin as soon as possible when baby is back verbalizes the need for maternal observations and then estimates blood loss is here it's here as well verbalizes the importance of completing relevant documentation you mentioned that part and then acts professionally throughout the procedure in accordance to the nmc and that is it husky is done like the that station is done let me see if i can still remember and then but i'm sure i have a video at the end of what it was like so i've i said i've gone to my scene now and they've told me that this woman is bleeding what am i going to do so basically the first thing to do is you go to the woman and then you it's an emergency situation so you may not have the time to be doing heidi checks and hope my name is bolaji i'm your midwife for today so um amy i like amy so much <laughs> amy you're bleeding now and this is an emergency called postpartum hemorrhage. I have identified that it is, I've identified what it is and I've stated it is postpartum hemorrhage. I'm going to be needing some help. So I'll pull the emergency but I don't get agitated when people come in. Okay. Hey me, you're bleeding profusely and it's an emergency called postpartum hemorrhage. Um, uh, do not be agitated if you see people running in. I'm gonna be needing some help, so I'm just gonna go get some help now. I'm just gonna run, pull the buzzer quickly. Postpartum hemorrhage. Can I get the assistance of the senior midwife, the senior obstetrician, the anesthetist, anesthetist, the potter, the theater team, and the clinical hematologist, the other midwives and scribes? Um, I'll go back to Amy. Hey, Amy, I'll um, position her flat on the bed and then commence oxygen immediately 15 liters per minute via non rebreather mask then if a baby is there i'm going to reposition the baby position the baby somewhere safe in a firm flat and warm surface somewhere that is safe um i'm going to go on to explain to amy amy so uh, postpartum memory could be due to four causes it could be due to trauma due to thrombin due to tissue or due to tone tone in the sense that your uterus is not well contracted it could be trauma due to perhaps you've got some lacerations it could be due to tissue perhaps you have some retained products of conception and it could be due to thrombin perhaps your clotting factors are not what it should be and that's why the clinical hematologist will be here to also take some hydrogen blood sample but in the meantime i'm just going to go up to rub up your uterus to initiate contraction and while i'm doing that i'm going to be assessing your last um your your perineum as well to see if there are any lacerations and then i'll also get someone to also check the placenta for completeness of the lobe so right now i'm just going to be rubbing up your uterus to see if it's contracted and assessing your perineum as well assessor can you confirm to me what is amy's um contra uh, contra what is Amy's uterus like? Is it contracted? Is it bulky? Is it round? Is it firm? And um, my perineum, is there any bleeding from anywhere? At the same time, I'm going to be trying to expel any products, put my hands in the vagina. Amy, are you all right for me to do this to expel any products? Assessor, can you confirm to me what is the, the, the uterus like? And is Amy still bleeding? Yes, she's still bleeding. Okay, so since Amy is still bleeding now, um, and um, can you confirm is the lobe complete, the placenta complete? Is there any um issues when it was checked? Yes, the placenta lobe is complete. Okay, so since those are complete, then I'm not worried about that. Then now I'm just going to go on to. I'll continue rubbing off the uterus. I'm gonna go on to set the um large bulk analyze on two hams. Um, one to commence crystalloid solution, e.g. Hartman solution, um, one, one liter to, for fluid replacement and the other to take urgent blood sample, to take, um, samples for renal function test, to take samples for liver function test, to take samples for grouping and cross matching four to six units of blood, to take sample for clotting factors, um, and for full blood count, um, Assessor, can you confirm is Amy still bleeding? She's still bleeding. Um, so I would go on to catheterize Amy. Um, to 
to using an indwelling foliage catheter with urometer so we can monitor the input and the output to allow for the contraction of the uterus um assessor is amy still bleeding yes yeah, okay bleeding. since amy is still bleeding now i'm just gonna go on to do our herbs quickly amy i'm just gonna do your herbs quickly um to check and rule out any signs of shock how watch how for any symptom any um for the for the pulse if it's higher than 100 beats per minute and for the systolic blood pressure if it's lesser than a uh, hundred millimeters of mercury assessor is amy still bleeding she's still bleeding okay since amy is still bleeding assessor can you confirm to me if amy has had uh um if she's had any oxytocin um when she had a baby Yes, she had some intellectual Okay, I'm just going to go on to administer the second um, dose now. Amy, I'm just going to administer the second dose of your oxytocin. And then I would follow this by the um, oxytocin infusion. And then I'm just going to follow with the... Um, I'm just going to... Okay, I'm going to go on to administer another dose of or any oxytocin drug could be oxytocin syntocin non-egometrine if she's going to be having egometrine i'll confirm if she doesn't have a history of hypertension and if her blood pressure is within normal range at the moment but then i'll also follow with um, oxytocin infusion i'll follow with misoprostol or carboprost i'll follow with an exemic acid and i'll follow with blood products blood at blood products assessor is amy still bleeding Yes, she's still bleeding. Okay, since Amy is still bleeding, I'm just going to go on to do my manual compression now. I'm going to make my hand into a fist. Hey, Amy, is that okay? Amy, you're still bleeding. And um, I'm just going to perform um, by manual compression now. Are you all right for me to put my hand into your vagina to trap the placenta site? So I'm just going to make a fist yeah. and put my hand into your vagina to trap the placenta site. And then I'm going to use my other hand on the fundus so to secure the uterus at that time and trap the placenta assessor is amy still bleeding yes yeah, she's still bleeding okay since amy is still bleeding i'm just going to go on to transfer to the theater i'll ask the anesthetist to review and ask the theater team to review uh where she could have um procedures like the billing suture she could have probably carbon she could have balloon tamponade or she could have hysterectomy um depending oh, on and she could also have it's possible she has um repair of um, sutures as this is going to be done on a, under anesthetist in the theater um but in the meantime would make plans to transfer amy to to the theater i'll debrief the family how they brief the wife i'll debrief amy how they brief her partner and um i would Continue to monitor, um, estimate blood loss. I'll repeat our herbs again and document on the Muse chart. I'll complete an incident report, um, and then I'll complete a performer. I'll complete the PPH performer. As soon as Amy comes back from theater, I would recommence um, skin to skin. Um, and she would be supported to feed her baby in the choice that she did, she, she she chooses. I would go on to um, discard the waste, the, the waste and clean all the equipment. I would ensure Amy is comfortable and um, I would wash my hands, document all and wash my hands according to the seven steps of hand hygiene by WHO. Kidding you, so <laughs> I like that everything. What? Oh my god, what can I say? Everything that's needed. Okay. So basically, that is pretty much what the postpartum hemorrhage skill station that is what is expected of you. I don't know if this video was in any way helpful, but if it was, feel free to let me know in the comment section. If you have any questions, let me know as well. I'm happy to answer them. Um, if there are any skill stations you are interested or you would like me to touch on, let me also know in the comment section. Um, so you see me again in my next video. I mean your darling or more BJ. Remain in God and God bless you. Bye.